All right, everyone, welcome back to the Tonto's Demise Week 4 Recap. All right, we are in between Weeks 4 and 5 right now. Sorry, Alf, I don't want to cover you up there. About a third of the way through the regular season already. Um, what happened this week? We didn't really have... I think last week a bunch of matchups came down to Monday night. This week, just one, and it was a good one. <laughs> Disco has been on radio silence for 24 hours, over 24 hours now. <laughs> Hopefully he's okay. Didn't do anything um, regrettable. Let's take a look here on Yahoo. Uh, Yahoo still says Disco is going to finish 10 and 4. You already have three losses. Said you were, they were predicting you to go 11 and 3, which I uh, said meant you're done losing. <laughs> so, on the bright side of last night, you're done losing for the rest of the year. <laughs> Until Christmas, at least. So, that would have been pretty nice. Uh, but Yahoo's been known to be wrong once or twice. Anyway, so yeah, um, only one matchup came down to Monday night. We had some people making some, looking back, probably some regrettable decisions that cost them some matchups this week. Uh, and we, <laughs> speaking of, we might as well get right on into it with the defending champion, Biscuits and Porn, who was going up against Getting Gritty. Getting greedy, trying to avoid falling to 0 and 4. Meanwhile, Biscuits and Porn trying to get back on track in his title defense. And Biscuits and Porn making a crucial error that costs him a victory this week. Gets Getting Gritty his first victory. Um, getting Gritty comes out on top 145.2 to Biscuits and Porn 139. Point oh five. So for Gritty, we had he went with he benched Burrow again. What did Burrow do? Only twenties. What what is going on with the Bengals this year? I mean, I I guess I'm sorry for picking that keeper for you, but honestly, you didn't really have much else. But I it's Joe Burrow. I did not think that this was gonna. I mean, the whole Bengals team. Ask the guys who have uh, T and Chase and uh, Mixon. Oh, he, you have Mixon, too, and you drafted Mixon, too, so you're suffering as well. But anyway, you went with Love. He got you 41. Justin Jeff gets you 26.5. Christian Kirk, your other keeper, doing okay for you there. He gets 16.5. Adam Thielen, 15. Mixon again, 8.5. Swift, DeAndre Swift, uh... Swifty there, your Philadelphia, um, Jason Kelsey's Swift. <laughs> he gets to 18. Um, Musgrave, your tight end, also from the Packers there. You've got the quarterback, the tight end, and the running back. A little too much reliance on the Packers offense for my taste there. Uh, but didn't cost you this week. Uh, Musgrave did go out with a concussion on Thursday night and uh, only 1.1 1. 1 there. Aaron Jones only two and a half. Butker in your kicker gets you about 11 and then your New Orleans Saints defense. Yahoo says seven. I think that must have been the cur was that the correct score? It might have actually only been four. It must have been four because we bumped you up Butker had some field goals there. You know what? I think actually you lost. Yeah, you lost one point. So New Orleans score was actually four, but Butker got you two points of the two of two of those three points back from his field goal kicks there. So yeah, New Orleans was four. But yeah, you only lost one point there. Fortunately for you, it was enough to get past Biscuits and Porn, who on Thursday night made a good move of putting in, picking up and playing the Detroit Lions defense. 
However, he failed to put in David Montgomery, who went off for three touchdowns, 100 plus yards, and 37 points. I guess we could say that it's the fault of David Montgomery, but then again, looking up and down Biscuits and Porn's lineup this week, suffice to say, most of his team <laughs> let him down in a six point margin difference here. Uh, huh. Biscuits, Kirk Cousins. The 60-point machine the first three weeks here. 21. 30, just 30 points from your quarterback, and you get a victory this week. He, Kirk Cousins throws up one of his stinkers, which he has from time to time. I can tell you from previous experience. Uh, yeah, only 21 points from Kirk Cousins this week. Devontae Smith, 15. Olav, only one and a half. Big factor there, too. Um, Jacoby Myers, only 5.5. Bijan gets you 21.5. He's been really solid. Josh Jacobs goes for 28. Bunch of catches. Touchdown there for him. Kittle only gets you 2. Um, Brian Robinson in the flex there instead of Montgomery. Only 13 points there, so a 24-point difference. And your kicker. Matt's gay, who went bonkers last week with five field goals, most of them 50 plus yarders. I what I don't really know what to say this week. Did he spend all his effort last week? Because Matt's gay this week. Zero! Mr. Crick! Uh, he puts up a donut. All he needed to do was make the field goal that he, um, I don't know, he, he missed a 40-some yard field goal, which took away your point for the PAT. So if he makes that 40-some yard field goal, we add five, if his, if his, if his field goal was 43, 42 yards or more, that he missed. If he makes that field goal, Biscuits and Porn wins this matchup. <laughs> because, how uh, is it? I, oh no, that would have been six. He would have needed six. So five. Yeah, I'm sorry there. It would have been, yeah, my bad. <laughs> Dude, um, simple math. Not my thing, I guess. Um, yeah, so it was sorry. It would have been, but you would have, it would have made. <laughs> This loss a lot more painful, I guess, because it would have been less than a point there difference. But yeah, um, all I can say about this one said for disco or not di disco disco biscuits, biscuits disco whatever. Um, said cousins only got you twenty one. Olaf one and a half. Kittle two. Your kicker zero. Uh, actually, I guess I skipped your defense here. The Detroit Lions defense. Yahoo says 17. Looks like the bump was about 15 to 32. So, so you um, said uh, you must have been feeling pretty good after Thursday night. Um, with your Lions defense, said getting gritty had Musgrave and Aaron Jones combined for three and a half points there. So you're probably feeling pretty good. And it all comes crashing down on Sunday for you. But anyway, getting gritty. Gets his first victory in Tonto's demise. Congratulations to you. Your first victory ever. You are now 1-3. While Biscuits and Porn drops to 1-3. Biscuits, though, is in 10th place. While getting gritty, right underneath him in 11th place. All right, we're just going to go right along the line here. So, um, Actually, no, we will do the matchup that came down to Monday night. So let's put Disco into the into silence. <laughs> um, yeah, Dub C Hooligans. 
going up against Disco. This one went into Monday night. Um, let's see. Uh, what happened? Who was this? What was the Sunday night game? I don't even remember now. Oh, excuse me. But anyway. Um, oh, yes, it was the Chiefs game. So, Disco was done, and Dub C had the Chiefs defense on Sunday night, and then he had Matt Breida on Monday night. Going into Monday night, Disco's lead was about 10.2, something like that. Uh, 10 and a half, somewhere between 10 and 10 and a half. I can't remember quite exactly. With Brita left to go. And I think just before the end of the third quarter, might have been the last play of the third quarter, Brita wanted, he had, ended up having five receptions. Uh, one of his last catches was enough to get Dubsy over. Uh, Brita said he needed about 10 and a half, ended up with 12.8. And Dub C, did he deserve this one? I don't know. He squeaks out the victory, 183.8 to 181.65. So yeah, just over two points there. Said Brita, he needed 10.5, got you 12.8. For Dub C, Josh Allen, big week this week. He gets you 63.5 points. Big factor here, A.J. Brown goes off in some overtime. Extra time for you. 175 yards and two touchdowns. 41 and a half points this week. Keenan Allen, I guess I guess it's kind of fair to dub C this week because he lost last week with a player scoring 50 points. That was Keenan Allen. And... He returned the favor to Disco by handing him a loss this week, despite one of his players going over 50 points. We'll get to that in a second. But Keenan, he only went for 12. The 2-2 train, 7.5. Stevenson, 6. Brita, again, 12.8. Hawkinson, only 4.5. Ayuk in the flex goes for 21. Your kicker, Koo, only one point, and your Chiefs defense, it was 14 from them. Uh, so Josh Allen and A.J. Brown carried Dub C this week to victory. Let's take a look at Disco. Uh, Dak Prescott goes for 45. Chase Waddle and Gabe Davis, 14 and a half, 8 and a half, and 15 respectively. Jamar Gibbs, only nine points here. A Shane, I think that's how they say his name. Um, another big game from him. Over 100 rushing yards, two more touchdowns, um, 30 points. I, I can't watch. I was watching that Buffalo Miami game and thinking, my goodness, uh, I think Gabe Davis scored the first touchdown. Then A Shane scored a touchdown. And then A Shane scored another touchdown. Like the first th two or three touchdowns in that game were all Disco's players. Uh, but yeah, he scored an even 30. Your tight end problems perhaps continue with only three points from Gerald Everett. Um, what did Hurst? Hurst was actually even worse. Uh, but then here, the big one, perhaps the best game you're going to get from the all year from Christian McCaffrey. Basically a dream score from him, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry, Disco. All for naught. Uh, McCaffrey over 100 yards. Three rushing touchdowns. A receiving touchdown. He goes for almost 52 points this week. <sighs> Sorry, man. Your kicker, Sanders. Only two PATs. And the Bengals defense, who carried you through last week, they let you down big time this week. Um, actually, we had to cut six points off of your score thanks to Yahoo's scoring being a little bit different than ours. And their score this week 
was only three. So that dropped you down there to, said we shaved six points off your score. Um, my, uh, let's take a quick look here at the box score from this matchup to see just how close Disco was to still winning this matchup. Um, uh, way too many. Uh, there it is. I knew some, I knew there was something. Um, the Bengals defense gave up 227 passing yards. As I'm sure Disco knows and the rest of you should know, uh, passing yards allowed the threshold for points for your defense ends at 225. So 220, any, any, any total that is 226 and over gets you a zero. And the Bengals defense gave up 227. So two less passing yards. Two. And Disco gets three points and a victory in this matchup. Sorry, Big Lert. <laughs> Not trying to rub salt in the wound, just taking a look here and see what little things could have gone differently to change the outcome of this matchup. Unfortunately, the Wizard, his, his, his magic only goes so far. Uh, yeah. But that has said, it uh, goes, feels, heart goes out to you. Um, seeing Matt Breida defeat, take you down on Monday night. Um, I, I'm sure you were probably aware of just of the, of what the Bengals defense let you down. But yeah, um, seeing McCaffrey's 52, said that's probably, probably going to be his best score all year. Unfortunately, going to waste for you. Doesn't get a win, but um, point total-wise... Um, not can't complain about that. Unfortunately, though, as I said, uh, Disco with this loss, he drops to one and three, not where he needed to be or what he wanted to have happen. While well, Dub C moves up to three and one, he's in third place, while Disco is in ninth place. But so one and three, it's still plenty of time to turn it around. I've been there before. You can do it. It's been done, so um, you said <laughs> nothing wrong with your team, just maybe a little bit of underperformance here uh, so far. Uh, so you've been suffering too from the Bengals, whatever's been going on that with them. I mean, Chase came through for you last week, but these other <laughs> the other three weeks kind of letting you down here. Um, perhaps some tight end help might have helped you this past week. Hmm. Not to, not, I mean, he, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Mentioned it a little bit in the podcast last week. Um, could have helped you out, perhaps, but you chose to go in a different direction and play the waiver wire. And this is where we are now. So, hmm. Anyway, yeah, Dub C is three and one. He's in third. Disco is one and three. He is in ninth place. All right, let's go straight down the line here. Yinzer Jags versus the Shawshank Athletics. Yinzer Jags after an zero and two start, trying to bounce back into the thick of things, and he gets the victory over Shawshank, one seventy five point three five to 129.75 for Yinzer Jags. Jalen Hurts goes for 55 and a half. DJ Moore pops off for 27. Romeo Dubs, 18 and a half. Quinton Johnson, Johnston, I should say, coming in for Mike Williams. Uh, you had him waiting there in the wings for the Mike Williams injury that was bound to happen sooner or later. And uh, only one catch for 18 yards, 2.8. Walker um, gets 
80 yards and a touchdown on Monday night. Gets you 14. Kamara comes back from his suspension. Catches 13 passes this week. However, his total score was only 21. His 13 catches went for about 2.2 yards per catch. Yards per reception. He had 50 rushing yards. Um, I'm going to guess uh, David Derrick. Why do I, I still, still 20 years later, I'm still saying David Carr. <laughs> Derek Carr. Uh, I assume due to his injured shoulder, he was checked down city in this game. 13 catches for Kamara. 21 and a half points. Uh, still just mind boggled by that yardage total on 13 catches. Laporta goes for 9.5. Jalen Warren in the flex, 11.5. Carlson, your kicker, about 4.5. And, and then your Eagles, Buns, Philadelphia, uh, they actually, let's see. Yahoo says 5. Looks like the actual score was about 11. About a 6-point bump here. There were actually, I believe, no long touchdown bonuses this week, so make it a little bit easier here for me to figure out your defensive score bumps. Um, but yeah, Hurts for 55, Eagles defense, Detling's buns this year. Eagles defense gets you 11, more than enough to get past the Shawshank Athletics this week, who, other than his quarterback and Derrick Henry, popping off for two touchdowns, I'm seeing a lot of single-digit scores up and down his lineup. Uh, Herbert injured his hand, I think his non-throwing hand, sometime in this game. Fortunately for him, he's going to buy this coming week, so he has a chance to heal. He did salvage his fantasy day by scoring two rushing touchdowns because he didn't do too much in, in terms of passing, only 13 completions. Uh, so he saved you with 12 points from those two rushing touchdowns. Gets you 37. Uh, your receivers, Garrett Wilson, Judy, and Hopkins. 15 from Wilson, 8 from Judy, and 10.5 from D-Hop. To so Derrick Henry, again, 28.5 points. He goes over 100 yards. He throws a touchdown pass. Runs for one. So you got a completion there. Kelly, you're the running back again a real disappointment here in place of Eckler. Only six and a half points from him. Fryermuth, your tight end, three catches, seven yards before injuring his hamstring. He's going to be out for a while. Uh, let's see, who's your other tight end? You did not play Njoku. You've got him on the bench there after he blew up a fire pit in his face. Still ended up playing the game. Um, interesting there. I, but looks like you're going to be relying on him for the next few weeks. Let's see when his... Oh, he had... Actually, Ninjoku has a bye this week. And Fryermuth will be gone. And those are your only two tight ends. So that means Josh is going to be working the waiver wire for whatever <laughs> literal scraps at the tight end position might be out there. Uh, what the hell? Let's take a quick look and see what tight ends are on the waiver wire here going into Tuesday night. All right, based on fantasy points, who are we looking at for Josh for week five? Boy, dude, this is ugly. I'm going to guess you're going to roll the dice on Johnny Smith, who now plays for Atlanta. I think he actually had a decent game last week. He had six for 95. He's been, uh, he didn't, he had a zero in week one, but he scored eight and a half, eight and a half, and 15 and a half. So that might be your play here. Kind of uh, completely off the radar. Uh, on him, I was at least. Oh, let's see. What else do we got? Because it, it's ugly. 
Um, the other, the other top four of said Johnny Smith and the other top, the other three people in the top three uh, in terms of tight ends, fantasy point wise for this year. The next three are all on bye this week, so we're looking at ooh, Logan Thomas from the Commanders and a bunch of guys that I've really never even heard of. Granson from the uh, Indianapolis, Smythe from Miami, Noah Gray from Kansas City, uh, Gazicki, Dawson Knox, Ugh, gosh, <laughs> Josh. Oh, that's not looking good for you. I guess you'll have to try for Johnny Smith and see what happens. Anyway, let's get back to the matchup. Um, Amari Cooper in the flex. Only two and a half points from him. Moody, your kicker. Nothing but PATs. Five points this week. And also said you got San Fran kicker. San Fran defense. They actually gave up a lot of yards and points there to... The Arizona Cardinals didn't have a big game. Yahoo says seven. Looks like a six, also a six point bump for you there to 13 points. But yeah, a lot of letdown here on Shawshank's team this week. Unable to get past Yinzer Jags. Uh, Yinzer Jags moves up to two and two, while Shawshank falls to two and two. However, Shawshank is in 6th place, while Yinzer Jags right under him at 7th place. Alright, uh, let's see. The Snooze Fest matchup that probably no one deserved to win this week. Hillbillies on PCP versus From Gags to Riches. And sadly, Gags is the first player this year who fails to reach the 100-point plateau thanks to his defense scoring less than what Yahoo says, and we actually had to shave three points off of your five-point score, dragging it down to two and pulling you under 100 points. Hillbillies on PCP gets the victory 127.3. To 99.8. Let's take a quick peek here. Yes. Hillbillies on PCP. You played the only team that you could have beat this week. To get you to 3 and 1. Uh, yeah, you're 127. Even Josh had 129. So yeah, Brian. Any team you would have played other than Gags this week. And you would have lost. But that's not what happened. So it is, as Gags would tell you, it is what it is. CJ Stroud goes for 44. Lamar Jackson insulted that you chose him, Stroud over him. Uh, actually went for 45. So you would have gained you actually would have gained a point if, if you had stuck with Jackson. Pickens, Pittman, and Watson. Five and a half, four and a half, ten and a half. Matheson and ETN, 11 and 10, respectively. Kelsey goes for 12. Shahid in the flex, you've been sticking with him. Um, not sure what you're waiting for there. I'm going to guess the fact that your bench doesn't have too much else. Oh, you're, you're waiting for Jonathan Taylor to come back off the pup list. That's what it is. I gotcha. Uh, Shahid. 6.3. Bass, your kicker from Buffalo, goes for about 15. Uh, and then your Cleveland Browns defense. You didn't go with Buffalo. Fortunately, it didn't matter here because Buffalo, actually, I know they were at home against Miami. I guess that scared you, but you went with Cleveland. Fortunately, it did not cost you. Yahoo score says 6. And it looks like you got a 3-point bump there to 9 from your defense. Uh, but more than enough to get past Gags to Riches this week. Uh, he had Tua go for 41. His receivers, T, Godwin, and Debo. T goes for 4 before cracking his ribs. Going to miss some time probably. Uh, the injuries just keep on piling up for Gags, unfortunately. 
Uh, Godwin actually went for 19 and a half. Um, but Debo only gets half a point. So yeah, ugly, ugly, ugly scores here uh, for Gags this week. Uh, Jerome Ford, your Cleveland running back in place of uh, Chubb. He gets you nine and a half points there. Uh, no Watson this week. Meant big things from the Ravens defense. Cleveland was not able to do much at all this week. Uh, Kyle Pitts, four. Michael Thomas in the flex, 9.3. Tucker, your kicker, oh, nothing but extra points this week. No field goals. He gets you four. And again, your Indianapolis Colts defense. Yeah, he says five. The actual score was two. Uh, this was the first week that I can remember in quite a while where we actually had to shave points from a bunch of people's defenses. Uh, Disco, um, Getting Gritty, Gags. All, uh, we said we had to take minus points from a whole bunch of people this week. Usually it doesn't happen. Usually it's one, maybe two, but we said we had at least three this week. Gags also, unfortunately, with the sub-100 score, you were eliminated from the knockout pool this week. Uh, you dropped a 2-2, two and two, while Hillbilly's on PCP. Arguably, un did he deserve this one to, to move up to 3-1 and one and in 4th place? Um, it's, what, it's where we are, so that's where we are. Um, Gags said you dropped a 2-2. Two and two. You are in 8th place. Um, but yeah, the bye weeks are starting up. You've got injuries. Uh, your bench is... Pretty hideous. <laughs> Sorry. Facts are facts. Um, yeah. Not looking bright uh, in the future here for gags. Uh, yeah. All right. What else we got? The other game that sort of came down to Monday night. Uh, Darkwing Jet versus Ed Lager. Darkwing had Daniel Jones. He had Darren Waller. And he had the, he had somebody else, right? Uh, the Tyler Lockett. Um, I actually didn't, I didn't write down what the scores were going into Monday night here, but um, Justin had a pretty comfortable lead. I, yeah, I think so. Um, it was going to take a miracle, probably, a Daniel Jones in early injury in this game for Ed Logger to have a chance. However, the Seattle, De the Seattle, Seattle Seahawks defense definitely gave it the old college try. They put up, um, I think, about 50 points. Looks like we bumped you about 15 from 35. So, yeah, your defense gave said they tried. They tried. They put up 50 for you, but it wasn't enough. Said to Justin has his, had his quarterback, a receiver, and a tight end. Uh, said, and still ended up getting about... A 21-point difference here for Darkwing Jet. So, yeah, that was just a little bit too much for Ed to, to try to overcome with just his defense on Monday night. Darkwing gets the victory 194.35 to 173.45. So, uh, basically, as the Dallas Cowboys defense goes, as Darkwing Jet goes this year... Because they put up another, oh geez, um, fi almost 50 points, another 50 from them. So a great defensive matchup in this one, Dallas versus Seattle here. Uh, and I, goodness, I just, I mean, just looking at the stuff that Justin has picked up this in the, for the draft this year. That, uh, so Dallas is defense, but your kicker, Elliot. He's been huge for you. He put up another 18 points this week. Uh, well, let's see. What else we got here? So, so Darkwing Jet said on Monday night, Daniel Jones, despite getting sacked 11 times from Ed Logger's Seattle defense, he manages about 36 points. Tyreek, only 10.2. So this one could have been a lot worse uh, for Ed, Ed for you there. What? Much more um, out of reach. C.D. Lamb, just under 15. Tyler Lockett goes for 9.5. And, 
Kyron Williams, another excellent draft pick that has worked out for Justin. Over 100 yards, two touchdowns. James Cook, 14 and a half. Waller, only five. Tank Dell, after a big game last week, you were chasing those points from him. Plugged him into the flex, only got you four. But again, Elliott, your kicker, gets you about 19 or so. And Dallas's defense, another 50 or so point performance from them. Um, I think last week they only got like three, <laughs> and you lost. Um, so yeah, as Dallas's defense goes, Darkwing Jet goes. Um, I guess you are playing the matchups, but I would be surprised if you don't have Stafford in as your quarterback the rest of the way. Um, the Giants, maybe I don't know if it was just testament to the Seahawks defense playing so well. But, yeah, the Giants looked awful <laughs> on Monday night. So I'm going to guess you're going to play Stafford. Um, I don't know. Did he have a bad week last week? Yeah, he only scored 30 last week. A bit of a down week. So maybe that uh, you shied away from him this week. Fortunately, it didn't matter. But if I had to choose between Stafford and Jones, I'm probably going to be going Stafford. Uh, you actually benched James Conner this week. I, I, I Makes sense. They were playing at San Francisco. Najee Harris been riding your bench too. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you, I mean, you got some good running backs on your bench. I, uh, you got James Conner. You're running. <laughs> your bench is James Conner, Najee Harris, Tajay Spears, and Roshan Johnson. Uh, Spears and Johnson, just kind of, I'm sure you're waiting for them. See somebody, one of those guys to emerge. Um, but yeah, Coffin Connor and, and Harris. Uh, Matchup wise, I'm sure that was the play for having Connor on your bench. How far Najee Harris has fallen to being a bench fodder, even though he was what your second or third round pick this year. Um, yeah, so yeah, uh, that's everything for Darkwing Jet. For Ed Logger, in defeat, he has Patrick Mahomes, only 31.5 points from him this week. Devontae uh, got injured in this game. Fortunately for Ed, he did come back. Looked like it was one of those tackles where you, somebody lands on their shoulder and gets like sprains their shoulder, or even worse, uh, one, a collarbone break. So the way he fell down and somebody and the guy like landed and he like grabbed that shoulder. Fortunately for you, he did come back into the game. He was okay. He gets 15 and a half points there because you're going to need him because Mike Evans has a hamstring injury. He went out with only seven points. Um, they're saying, I'm looking here, it's a mild hamstring injury. So that is fortunate for you. Um, but yeah, you never know. When it comes to hamstring injuries, you got to be careful. Scary Terry. Um, he goes for eight for 80, but he actually recovered, I think Brian Robinson's fumble in the end zone. So a touch, he, he didn't, he re, didn't actually score a touchdown receiving. He got you one by jumping on the ball in the end zone there that Brian Robinson laid out for him. Um, oh yeah. Well, yeah. Did, um, wow. If Brian Robinson Scores that touchdown. I can't believe I completely forgot about this, too. Um, yeah. we we got to jump back to biscuits and porn. If you add those six points, it said it wasn't a lost fumble, but if he scores that touchdown, I'm sure you know because you were, I wasn't watching the Eagles game, but I'm sure you were. Uh, yeah. It was right at the goal line. At, like... He was this close to breaking the plane with the ball, um, and McLaurin fell on it. Those six points gets Biscuits and Porn a victory this week. What? Wait, wait, why do I keep... No, I'm wrong. Again, why do I keep thinking that the difference was five? Um, <laughs> what is... I? I'm not, I feel like I should turn this off and like completely do the recap all over again. 
I, for some reason, I keep thinking that the difference was five. It was 6.15. So, if Brian Robinson had actually, I'm sorry for all this, if Brian Robinson had actually scored that touchdown, Biscuits and Porn would have lost this matchup by 0.15, which actually would not be the closest margin of defeat in Tonto's demise history. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's 0 0.05, which can't it cannot get any smaller than that. That's what she said. But anyway, what is I I I don't, I don't for some reason I keep thinking that is it was a five point difference, not a six point difference. So I just wasted two minutes of my time and your time. Sorry guys, let's go back to Ed Logger. <laughs> um, yeah, Javante Williams he gets hurt in this game as well. They uh, but they're also saying it's not as serious as they thought it was. Um, he only got you four. Mostert only got you five and a half. Cole Komet, beneficiary of Justin Fields going off in the first part of this game, um, making a Denver the Den Denver Broncos defense making everyone look good this year until they actually came back and Fields committed some turnovers and co ended up costing the Bears this game. Uh, Twenty seven and a half points for Komet. In the flex, Flowers in the flex, eight points. L. McPherson, your kicker, about two and a half. And then again, the Seattle Seahawks defense. They tried their best on Monday night, but could not quite do it. If they had knocked Daniel Jones out of the, actually out of this game with one of those 11 sacks early on, uh, this, this matchup actually might have gone the other way. But it did not. Ed Logger, you dropped a two and two. You are in fifth place. Meanwhile, Darkwing Jut, he moves up to 3-1, and one, holds on to first place. However, that gap between him and the people trailing him has been narrowing through the past couple weeks there. So we will see how long, if or if, Darkwing Jut can hold on to first place. Uh, Alright, then finally we got the Wizard of Wimber. Going up against Possum Magic this week. And the Wizard pulls off a victory. 217.7 to Possum's 170.75. Um, just biggest factor here. I actually went and figured out what would have happened. Possum there. If, and I'm kind of surprised that you didn't do this. If you had played the Jacksonville Jaguars defense against Atlanta, um, so you actually played offensive players against your defense, Pitts you went with Pittsburgh, their actual score was zero, um, and I believe the Jacksonville Jaguars defense actually would have scored 37, which would have bumped you up to 207 points, meaning um, I actually would have been trailing you going into Monday night with DK Metcalf. Uh, he only would have needed like two and a half, three points, and he got it. But, yeah, the, um, so it wouldn't have changed the outcome of this matchup, but I actually would have been trailing you. I had, would have had to sweat it out a little bit there on Monday night. Fortunately, that didn't happen. Uh, so the Wizard of Wimber actually had the highest score in the league this week. Despite Jared Goff only going for 31.5 on Thursday night, Diggs scores more than my quarterback. He goes for 36. Uh, was looking forward to that matchup. Said Buffalo versus Miami was going to be a high-scoring one there. Was looking forward, and Diggs did not let me down. Uh, kind of surprised that they didn't talk about that in the preview podcast. Last week, that uh, the Bills Dolphins game, um, the potential fantasy feast that that was. Um, all right, then Addison actually goes for zero, puts up a donut this week. Uh, said Kirk Cousins put up one of his duds, and Addison was the main um, victim of that. I guess we could say he scored a zero. 
Puka, 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 nakuka. It's not really nakuka, it's, na, it, it's nakua. I'm just going to call him. To me, he's puka, nakuka. He goes for another 34 and a half points here. Gets his first touchdown of the year, uh, which won the game for the Rams and put him over 150 receiving yards. Gave me a little three-point bonus there. So, yeah. Uh, Puka goes for another 34, 34 and a half. Tony Pollard, only I, uh, the uh, <laughs> not helping me fantasy point wise for Tony Pollard with the Cowboys blowing out people every single week. Uh, hasn't quite come back to haunt me yet, but another subpar fantasy performance. Well, I mean, I guess I shouldn't really say that. Uh, Pollard has scored. 18, 19, 22, but yeah, only nine points this week. Going to need uh, Dallas's defense to let teams uh, make the games a little bit more competitive so that Pollard can get some action. Nine points this week. Rashad White, 11. Mark Andrews finally shows up. He catches two touchdowns, goes for 25 this week. So DK Metcalf there in the flex, 12 and a half. McManus goes for about 15. And the Baltimore Ravens defense, uh, as I mentioned a little bit ago, they feasted on Cleveland with no Deshaun Watson this week. There wasn't much they could do. They only scored three points. Um, Yahoo says 22. It uh, looks like I actually got about a 20, whew, 20, 21 point bump up there to about 43 from the Baltimore Ravens defense. So yeah, despite uh, that subpar performance from Jared Goff, Diggs goes for 30 plus, Puka goes for 30 plus, Andrews 25, and the Ravens defense over 40 there. Enough to get past Poston Magic this week, who had Purdy go for 44. Amon Ra, Calvin Ridley, and Nico. 16 and a half, 12, and actually Nico Collins pops off this week, uh, outperforming Diggs and Puka. He goes for 38.8, two touchdowns, over 160 yards receiving. Uh, Pacheco tried his best, too, on Sunday night there, one of his best games of his career. He goes for over 100 yards, a touchdown. Uh, actually did some work out of the receiving there too. I think they were saying in the broadcast that this was like a hometown game from him. He's from New York, I guess, New Jersey, in that area. So he was playing. And if you, I mean, he looks like he was running for his life. His He had like a 40-yard touchdown run early on in that game. <laughs> he said he looked like he had, a, his, he had a fire in his pants running. Like his, I don't know, his shoes were on fire whatever you want to say. Like, he was running <laughs> for his deer. Like, his life depended on it. Uh, he got you 28 points this week. Zach Moss, 9. Godert, only 4.5. You're kind of surprised. I don't know if you're going to make a switch here over to Ferguson, the Dallas tight end who has been consistently outperforming Godert this year. Um, just taking a look at Godert. Single-digit scores every week for him. Meanwhile, Ferguson has been uh, double digits the last two, th two of the last three weeks there. Um, getting targets. I haven't really watched any Eagles games, but I've seen some Cowboys stuff there. And wouldn't surprise me until Godert proves otherwise if Possum Magic makes a switch and gets him in your tight end spot. Still bummed that I Ended up uh, dropping him. Um, didn't really want to, but didn't really want to have three tight ends on my roster as well. Um, but yeah, actually, that reminds me. I guess I could, it's been long enough now that I guess I could tell you. Well, let's finish up here, Possum, real quick. Uh, London in the flex, 12. Dicker the kicker goes for six point something. And again, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense put up a zero for you. Um, Possum Magic, he drops to one and three. He actually takes over the basement from getting gritty. He's in 12th place, while the Wizard of Winber is three and one. He moves up to second place. 
Um, at some point early on in the season there, I had a free spot in my lineup after I had Deontay Johnson in the IR. And I, <laughs> no joke, I was like, should I pick, who should I pick up? Before you know, the game started, and you know what people, everybody goes in the on the waivers there. Who should I pick up? Ferguson, which is who I ended up picking up, or Puka. <laughs> Ferguson, I could have picked. I could have had Puka for free. I was this close to having Puka for free, and um, did, was wasn't sold on whether. His, I uh, couldn't decide if his week one performance was an anomaly or not. And so I picked up Ferguson, had three tight ends, was hoping to maybe somebody make me an offer for one of my guys, um, ended up moving him, but ended, said, ended up having to trim my roster. When, I don't know, was somebody, did I have somebody else hurt? Um, but yeah, I had, to, I had to get rid of somebody. And ended up dropping. I picked uh, nobody really didn't want to, but said ended up dropping Ferguson at one point there. But yeah, uh, still kicking myself about that. I was said I was back and forth who to pick up for that free spot in my roster. Thanks to said Deontay Johnson being on IR, and it was Puka or Ferguson, and I went with Ferguson. <laughs> ended up getting Puka. Had the splurge on him. Glad I'm. Um, hey, I am 100% glad that I did that. I'm still a little concerned on Cooper Cup. What's going to happen with him when he comes back? If he comes back, this I'm. I'm still skeptical. I will believe it when I see it because it just seems weird that his hamstring injury still is. They're saying that he's not. He's Still not 100%. So I think we, I think it's tomorrow. We will find out. He can come off the IR. They can open. I think it's like a 21-day window to bring him off of IR. So I'm going to guess they will do that. But I've been re looking around a little bit on Twitter. And from what I saw, some reporter said that um, according to the Rams... They want what did she said they wanted Cooper Cup to be eighty to ninety percent healthy, and they said that he's still not there after over a month of being on IR. He's still not. That I I don't know how accurate that is. It would be surprise me that Cooper Cup is still not after said after all this time, his hamstring is not one hundred percent yet, or even eighty to ninety percent. Which hmm, makes me wonder if it's not something a little more serious. But we will find out, obviously, here in the coming days what happens with that. But, yeah, I'm worried a little bit about when Coop, what's going to happen to Puka when Cooper comes back. However, um, I would think that the Rams are going to be cautious with Cup, and we'll see what happens. So... At least in the near term, I'm not worried as much as maybe some other people think I would be about Cup's return. So yeah, it just seems like if he if that's true, that he's not even 80% back to full yet, that's kind of weird to me. So yeah, um, ob obviously I'm concerned about Cooper Cup coming back and damaging Puka's performance here, but I my concern is fairly minimal at this point. As we know, Matthew, Stafford and the Rams were able to very much support a um, dual wide receiver threat there with um, Robert Woods and Cooper Cup there for a couple years. Um, someone with the talent of Nakua should be able to still put up pretty good performances here. Although, of course, they still have Kyron Williams, who made Cam, obviously made, made Cam Akers expendable. They sent him off to Minnesota. Um, he, he's, <laughs> he, 
he looks like the best running back they've had in quite a while. Better than, um, boy, I don't even remember who. I mean, obviously, they think he's better than Cam Akers. Who was their guy from before that? Um, the guy that came from the Patriots. That um, I can't remember his name. Um, was it wasn't that? Was it Stephen Ridley? Was he that, was that, that who I'm thinking of? The guy, I think yeah. Um, he, uh, he, he, yeah. I think that's. I don't know why that's escaping me too. Um, just I'm not. I don't know what's going on. I'm not with it with it here tonight. But anyway, um, yeah, that's it for uh, uh, week four. Um, yeah, this week said knockout was Jags. He joins Yinzer Jags, Biscuits and Porn, Darkwing Jet and Gags to Riches, the first four teams eliminated from the knockout pool. Um, everybody in the league is now either 3-1, and 2-2, two and two, or 1-3. and three. We've got four teams at each spot. Uh, let's take a quick peek here at week five. We got two of the three and one teams going up against each other. Wizard of Winber versus Dub C Hooligans. Somebody's going to get win number four in that matchup. Shawshank versus Biscuits. Uh, Biscuits, a heavy favorite according to Yahoo right now. Probably because the Chargers are on a bye this week. I don't know who Josh's other quarterback is. Uh, Richardson from Indianapolis. Um, so Josh has no, but he's going to ha not have a tight end available for this week. He's got Barkley in his lineup, hoping Saquon can come back this week. Uh, Biscuit's got his lineup all set. He's good to go. Um, yeah, Biscuit's looking to avoid dropping to one and four. Tough spot to be in. Uh, but yeah, he's a pretty heavy favorite as of right now, according to Yahoo. Darkwing Jet versus Possum Magic, a 3-1 versus 1-3. Uh, Darkwing, pretty heavy favorite as of right now. Let's take a quick peek if there's any bye week issues here. Uh, who's got... Possum's kicker is on a bye. Other than that, he's got the rest of his lineup basically the same as it was. But, uh, Eckler's on a bye this week. Uh, you still got Godert in there. Not sure. Maybe you'll make some changes there. Um, so looking at Possum's lineup here. Uh, yeah, no, no real bye week problems yet for you. So just your kicker, and you're hoping that um, I'm sure you'll be that Eckler will come back for you. Um, hopefully it's not too little, too late uh, when Eckler comes back. Um, but yeah, you got a tough matchup this week against number one, number one versus number twelve here. Uh, Justin's got Tyler Lockett on a bye. Other than that, the rest of his lineup is pretty much the same, so not too much of a problem there. He's a heavy favorite according to Yahoo. Then we got Disco and Yinzer Jags. Disco, uh, almost over over a thirty point favorite currently against Yinzer Jags. He is looking to avoid going one and four, uh, while Dis while Yinzer Jags is trying to win his third straight game. Let's take a look. Disco, any bye week issues for you this week? Um, doesn't look like anybody that you regularly use is out. Um, you had Elijah. I mean, Gabe Davis. You bet. You put him to the bench for Marquise Brown. No, that's not a, not a bad choice there. It seems like Gabe Davis has been touchdown dependent. Other than that, uh, said Everett, the tight end you picked up is on by, so you got Hunter Hurt, Hayden Hurst back in there. Um, yeah, everything else for Disco is pretty normal. For Yinzer Jags, his lineup... Um, Plugging Boyd in there since T. Higgins is probably going to be out. No Kenneth Walker this week. He's in your flex currently. 
I'm gonna well, you're probably you'll probably throw Cam Akers in there. You're crossing your fingers, hoping that Cooper Cup plays. Uh, but other than that, uh, Yinger Jags said plug it in somebody in the flex there. Will it be Cooper Cup? Probably be Cam Akers, and we'll see what happens here. Uh, all right, what else we got? Hillbillies versus Ed Logger. Ed Logger currently about a 10-point favorite, uh, according to Yahoo. Let's take a look at what we got. Hillbillies lineup looks pretty much the same as usual. He's got Jonathan Taylor plugged into his flex, took him off uh, off of your IR spot. He is still... He's coming back from the pup, so we'll see what happens there. Could be a big boost for Hillbillies. Other than that, I don't see any bye week issues for him this week. For Ed, uh, let's see, he's got Zay up as a wide receiver, so that must be, you must have an issue there. Uh, yeah, Mike Evans. So good uh, bye week for Mike Evans. Let his hamstring heal there for you. Um, you got Moster, you got. You got Jamison Williams coming back early from his suspension. You have him plugged into the flex. Uh, your Seattle defense on a bye. But you got the Miami defense, who is going up against, once again, the Giants defense. So Ed's got teams against the Giants defense two weeks in a row here. Um, yeah, you got everything else looks... You're, I mean, you said you. Mike Evans is out this week, but you bumped Zay Flowers up into your wide receiver spot. You're getting Williams back just at the right time. We'll see what he does this week. Um, said you have him plugged into your flex as of right now. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Some interesting things there. Um, will he be able to come back and perform right away? You still have Javante Williams in your lineup. Uh, they say his injury isn't too bad, but you really don't have much else to choose from uh, running back-wise on your bench here. So, um, but yeah, bye weeks not really throwing a big wrench in things for most people. Um, did I look at Wizard versus Dub C here? I know I don't have DK. I don't have Rashad White. Going to be playing two tight ends this week. Um, kind of, I'm okay with that. Not great. But um, for Dub C, no Keenan Allen this week. Um, that's pretty much the only problem bye week issue you have. Um, uh, yeah, you got Brita. We'll see. He might be. Irrelevant now that Saquon comes back. You got you plugged in Gus Edwards, you got Mims in the flex there. Not really sure how I feel about that. Um, but yeah, a little bit of bye week problems here for each team here. Said uh, gonna be starting starting Brees Hall. Hopefully, he's playing Denver. Um, then Denver has made everybody look good so far this year, hopefully. Although I'm a little nervous because if I remember correctly, at Denver is where Brees Hall tore his ACL last year. That may, I'm pretty sure, not 100%, but it does make me a little bit nervous. <laughs> um, but yes, the no DK got to start two tight ends this week. Hopefully, Addison doesn't score a zero. M matchup wise, everything actually looks pretty good for me. I think. Uh, so kind of liking that. Bal if uh, Trubisky ends up starting for the Steelers this week, I like Baltimore's defense. Um, yeah, you've got uh, you've got Josh Allen, but I've got Diggs to counter that. So yeah, um, the first week of buys not really having a huge effect on the matchups here. So all right, everybody, who over an hour? Can't believe it. Uh, seems like I just started. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for listening, watching, or whatever it is you do. No injuries this week. May everyone's players and teams meet or exceed expectations. And we all have fun. And we're back here next week to see what happened 
in week five of Tonto's Demise. Uh, Kevin, over here this week, your dog just took a big shit. You might want to go get that. One of, one of these times I'm going to be right. I know. <laughs> but anyway, all right, guys. See you next week. Thanks for watching, listening, and yeah, good luck to everyone except, especially, but especially me. That yeah, I don't say that anymore though. The wizard doesn't say that. Anyway, all right, for sure this time, guys. Goodbye.